the ESP32 is a powerhouse microcontroller with its two cores, but to truly take advantage of its capabilities, you need to understand how to use tasks and take your projects to the next level. If tasks in your project feel overwhelming or you just can't wrap your head around them, don't worry, there's a surprisingly simple way to think about tasks that will clear the mental roadblocks and make you get started. Starting with a simple setup, making three LEDs blink at different intervals. Then we'll move on to a more advanced project featuring tasks that run an animated GIF, manage a push button, and control a new pixel strip, all working seamlessly together. For this demonstration, I will use Visual Studio Code with an Arduino extension that I built myself. But you can follow me along in the Arduino IDE if you prefer. It will work the same way. Let's create a new sketch. I'll start by selecting the board I'm using for this project, the ESP32 S3. This is my go-to board for most of my projects, and if you'd like to give it a try, I've included a link in the video description. Next, I'll check if the selected port is right for uploading the code, so we're ready to go. Let's start by making three LEDs blink at different intervals without using tasks. This will give us a clear comparison to see how tasks can simplify things. Let's include the Arduino header file. I start by defining my first LED, which is on pin 5 setting a delay of 1000 milliseconds to make it blink at 1 second intervals. To manage this, I need to keep track of the LED's timing. In the setup function, I configure the LED's pin mode and initialize its timing variables. Then, in the loop, I simply check if the specified time has passed. Based on this, I toggle the LED between high and low states to create the blinking effect. Now let's upload the code. The first LED is blinking at 1 second interval. To make the other two LEDs blink, I simply duplicate the definitions from the first LED, updating the names and pin numbers to reflect each new LED. Now let's assign unique blinking durations to the second and third LEDs. We'll set the second LED to blink every 300 milliseconds, and the third LED to blink at a much faster interval of 50 milliseconds. I then copy the setup code, adjusting the variable names to match each LED. Finally, I replicate the logic in the loop ensuring the variable names correspond to the respective LEDs. The three LEDs are now blinking independently, each with their own unique interval. This code works well for managing three LEDs, but imagine what happens when we start adding more components. Let's say you want to include a button, a temperature sensor, a motor, each of these will require its own variables, timing logic, and code in the setup and loop functions, making the code harder to read, debug, and maintain. Now let's redo this project using task instead. Let's configure the board. Let's include the Arduino header file. I'll start by adding the three definitions for the LED pin numbers. In the setup function, I'll call a function to create and launch a task for the first LED, naming it LED1Task. I'm using a code snippet provided by the Arduino extension. If you're using the Arduino IDE, you can easily write the function manually or copy and paste it from my GitHub repository. I've put the link in the video description. And if you're interested in using this Arduino extension, I've also created a detailed tutorial, again the link is in the video description. For now, you don't need to focus on the additional parameters for this function just yet. I'll explain them in more detail later. 
Next, outside the setup function, I define the task function for the first LED, using the same name we assign when creating the task. Task functions operate similarly to Arduino's standard setup and loop functions. The code above the for loop serves as the task setup. It runs only once, just like the Arduino setup function. Meanwhile, the code inside the for loop run continuously, the same behavior of the Arduino loop function. In the setup portion of the task, I configure the pin mode for the LED. Then in the for loop section, I'll toggle the LED on and off to create the blinking effect. To control the blinking interval, I'll add a delay of 1000 milliseconds or one second at the end of the loop. And that's it. Let's upload the code. The first LED is blinking at 1 second interval. To add task for the other two LEDs, I simply duplicate the task creation code in the setup function and update the task function names accordingly. I follow the same approach for the task functions, copying the first one twice and renaming the LED references for each. Finally, I adjust the blinking intervals by changing the delay in each task, the second LED to 350 milliseconds and the third LED to a rapid 50 milliseconds. As you can see, I am not using the standard loop function. It's not needed in this case. Let's upload the code. The best way to understand the creation and launching of tasks in the setup function is to think of them as separate Arduino sketches running simultaneously. For the sake of this analogy, let's rename our task as sketches. By viewing tasks in this way, it becomes much easier to grasp how they work. Each task functions are like its own independent sketch, allowing you to modify and run them separately without interfering with one another. A brief word about the task parameters. The task function is the name of the function to execute. It runs your task code. And again, think of it as the sketch to run. Task name is the name for the task, useful for debugging or monitoring. Stack size is the memory allocated for the task execution. You may have to increase it for tasks with AV computation or using many local variables. Task input parameters is an optional pointer to data passed to the task. In our case, we pass null since we're not using it. Task priority determines the importance of the task. Higher numbers indicate higher importance or priority. Changing task priorities can be tricky and I recommend leaving them as is unless you know exactly what you're doing. Personally, I've always kept my task at a priority of one across all of my projects with no problem. Task handle is a reference to the task control actions like suspending or resuming a task. Use null if task control isn't needed. The core to run the task specify which core, zero or one, the task runs on. The ESP32 has two cores. Core 0 is primarily used for system tasks like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Core 1 is generally reserved for user-defined task and application logic. While it's possible to run tasks on Core 0, it's important to be cautious. EV tasks on Core 0 can interfere with system stability. For most use cases, Core 1 is the recommended choice. Let's experiment by running the first LED sketch on Core 0. While we won't notice any visible difference in the behavior, internally the SP32 is now running the first LED task or sketch on Core 0, while the other two LED sketches continue running on Core 1. By thinking of tasks as separate sketches, everything becomes much simpler. This mindset unlocks a powerful way to approach coding on the ESP32. 
Now let's see this concept in action with an ESP32 S3, a 240 by 240 round screen, a NeoPixel strip and a push button. Each of these components is managed by its own separate task or sketch. One task displays an animated GIF on the screen, another handles the NeoPixel strip which randomly displays pixel in different colors, and a third task reads input from the push button. When I press the button, the GIF alternates between an alien eye and a supernova explosion. You can think of these tasks as three separate sketches running simultaneously, one for the display, one for the new pixel strip, and one for the button input. I've structured the code this way to keep it modular and make the overall project much easier to manage and expand. I have put the link to my GitHub repository for this code in the video description. The setup function is where we create and launch three separate tasks or sketches. These are the screen sketch, the button sketch and the new pixel sketch. Each task is organized into its own separate file, making the code easier to maintain, debug and expand. Every sketch follows a similar structure. It includes the necessary libraries, defines constants, global variables, just like a standard Arduino sketch. Within each file you'll find the task function or sketch, which is divided into a setup section executed once, and a loop section, executed repeatedly. Additional helper functions, if needed, are defined below the main task function, keeping everything clean and organized. Download the code and try running the animated GIF sketch on core 0. All you need to do is update the task creation for the screen sketch by specifying core 0 instead of core 1. Using task on the ESP32 transformed the way you approach projects, making your code more modular, efficient and easier to manage. By thinking of task as separate sketches, you can take full advantage of the ESP32 dual-core capabilities. Whether it's blinking LEDs, handling buttons or running complex displays, task open a world of possibilities. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts or questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.